and welcome back to the David67 uh, Celtic News YouTube channel. Today's video, a preview of Celtic's game live on Sky TV tomorrow, lunchtime, 12 noon, on the infamous plastic pitch of Kilmarnock, where Brendan Rodgers has lost three times in his career as Celtic manager. Today's video going to have a wee look at what I would suggest as being Celtic's best lineup for the game tomorrow and also where Brendan Rodgers is likely to disagree with me. A couple of wee bits of Celtic news regarding transfers in and out and also ongoing speculation that Harry Kuhl will soon be off uh, to Japan to manage Yokohama. Uh, apparently he's very keen to get back into management rather than coaching and it will be sad to see him go as I do think he has actually made a real difference to Celtic's uh, attacking play particularly the white play and he seems very much to have taken Luis Palma under his wing as was shown by Palma coming across to specifically thank him after one of his goals earlier this season. So just we'll cover the wee, wee bits of other news. Uh, so Rogers has said that uh, Kuehl is uh, being courted by a couple of different teams to take over as their manager. Yokohama seemed to be the top of the list. Rogers didn't uh, indicate there would be any kind of uh, blockages or problems with Kuehl moving on, nor did he speculate regarding who would take over as a coach uh, to replace him. Um, he was rather coy on incoming transfers. He did acknowledge that with the Asian Cup, likely, likely to take away Kyogo, O and Maida for six weeks, that Celtic would have a gap at striker. He was mentioning the possibility of a player moving up. I wonder whether he's talking about Rocco Vata as I think uh, Vata actually, in his new role of central striker for the B team and in Europe in the youth competition, has played well. I think he is worthwhile a go uh, through the middle centrally. Also Palma and uh, Tilio and Forrest and Johnston uh, and Abada can all work through the middle also. Um, also speculating regarding possible incoming transfers. He was very coy regarding um, Boyan Miofsky, uh, who is said to be aware, uh, uh, available for around 4.5 million from Aberdeen. Uh, Miofsky obviously has had a good record in uh, the Scottish League the last season and a half for Aberdeen, with 11 goals so far this season. Does give Celtic an option for an aerial threat, which they don't really have quite so much with Kyogo. Lauren Shankland has also been rumoured uh, to be joining Celtic, although Rangers seems a more likely uh, team, it would appear, from Shankland's own preferences. And finally, uh, Matthias Kiesgaard in the Bromby, 21-year-old, uh, um, who has a, had apparently a good season for Bromby, uh, with six goals and seven assists in... Uh, 17 games in the Danish Super League. Um, he apparently this season has been much more mature, much better at shot selection and has more often been passing off to teammates in better positions to score rather than going for it himself. Um, the Keith Garden price keeps on going up and up and up. In the summer, uh, four to five million was said to be enough to to get his signature from Bronby. However, with the interest from uh, lower half league teams in the Bundesliga and English Premier League, uh, it would appear that his asking price is now up to eight uh, to nine million pounds. Even so, one speculation this morning talking about 10 million pounds for Keith Garden. I think of those three options, Miofsky, Shankland, and Keith Garden. The Keith Garden is uh, significantly the best option, uh, being uh, 
much younger than the other two um, and having much more potential for getting better and better. Um, I did a couple of videos earlier on uh, in the season about Keith Garden, including some scouting reels for Keith Garden, and I speculated that he reminded me a lot of a young Henrik Larsson in terms of his build, his skills, and his ability to score with both feet and with his head and hold up the ball for midfielder, fielders and other attackers to come on to. I think he is a complete player who could come in and score goals for Celtic straight away, which will be important in the Asian Cup um, spell. And I think he has the, the ability and the potential to get better and better and better um, and score plenty of goals for Celtic in Scotland and in Europe. Uh, whether um, 9 million is a realistic price for him, I am not so sure. Five or six sounds much more reasonable. And for five or six, we would appear to be able to get Sydney by Hoidonk from the Italian league. And uh, Van Hoidonk very much out of favour uh, with his host, with his club. Um, and also the possibility of Van Hoidonk on loan, which was also a factor that Rogers mentioned, that they are looking at the potential of loaning a top striker for the last half of the 23-24 season and this is purely speculation but um, the uh, season in Major League Soccer of course is finished which would allow Georgios uh, Giacomakis um, to come back to Celtic on loan and there have been instances of American players coming to play in Scotland and England and Europe in their close season to maintain their fitness and I, for one, would love to see Giacomacus back at Celtic. Although that's purely speculation, and I haven't seen any kind of news stories backing them, that up. It's just based on a few years of uh, uh, watching football. Um, Rogers also in his press conference was talking about Carter Vickers going for a hamstring scan. Um, Rogers very much seemed to under underplay and downgrade the seriousness of CCV's hamstring injury. And of course, he did the same thing after the Aberdeen match, and we didn't see CCV for another six weeks. Um, and check quite assiduously on the internet and cannot find any mention of the results of CCV's scan and one would have expected that should have been back with the Celtic staff uh, yesterday after the scan um, and so we'll just need to see whether CCV is fit enough to play tomorrow at Kilmarnock. So moving on to the team prediction, my predicted lineup was Hart and goals, Alistair Johnston uh, right back, a wee bit of a concern playing Johnston with his ongoing ankle grumbles, with it being a plastic pitch, which tends to exacerbate knees and ankles and calves and hamstrings. <coughs> but I don't think Ralston is good enough uh, in a game that might need quite robust defence. For that reason, they've also gone with Lagabielka and Navrocki as the central defensive partnership. Again, I don't think we should be risking CCV even if he is fit uh, on a plastic pitch because it's just likely to set off his hamstring even worse. And I think we need need him for the game against Feyenoord next midweek. Um, Navrocki, I think, needs to get back into the side. I don't think there's any uh, future in playing uh, Nat Phillips, given the fact that he's only with us for three more weeks. I think the sooner we get Navrocki and Lagibielka back into the team and match the squads, the better, um, as I think we're going to need both of them uh, in the second half of the season. Um, Greg Taylor apparently was under the, the weather with the flu uh, for the Hibs match, played uh, just under an hour. I think also, um, given the way that Kilmarnock liked to play, 
uh, quite uh, keen to get the ball into the box. Um, I think we need more of a physical presence for corners, long, kick, long throws uh, and high balls into the box. And so I would go for scales at left back rather than Taylor. Um, midfield, I think, picks itself. Tomoki Iwata was so good against Hibs. He has to play now and right up until when Hatati's back from to full fitness. McGregor and O'Reilly um, played excellently against Hibs. And we need them to do the same again in their advanced roles. With Tomoki Iwata doing all the hard work. Um, in midfield, allowing them to be much more creative and forward thinking. Uh, for me, I would actually go for Marco Tilio on the right. I think Mikey Johnson was very disappointing in the game against Hibs, not saying that Marco Tilio did a particularly good job when he came on, but I think Tilio needs time in his legs and he needs confidence and support. And I think he may well very much prosper uh, against Kilmarnock with the way they play. On the left, obviously, Lewis Palmer, who's up now rivaling Matt O'Reilly as being player of the season. And I would go with O through the middle again. Again, I think his more combative, stronger style of football will do well against the Kilmarnock defence. Um, and with, uh, obviously, Kyoko on the bench to come on uh, as needed. And I personally would probably start with Kyogo against Feyenoord in the game at Celtic Park next week, um, with or without O as a second striker. I think Rogers, however, will go for Mikey Johnson again on the right, um, although from the way that Rogers is talking, it sounds like he's starting to lose patience with Mikey Johnson's um, form being in and out and his performance and his effort being in and out but then that's pretty much the way Mikey Johnson has been at Celtic for the last eight years some games um, the odd flash of good skill um, shows lots of pace um, seems however very very um, fickle and form comes and goes effort comes and goes doesn't always seem to give a hundred percent and of course, has an amazing propensity for getting himself injured in being out for months and months. In terms of the result, I think Celtic quite strongly um, will do well. Um, just looking at the stats in the league, um, it's now five years since September 20, uh, 2018 that Celtic have lost to Kilmarnock in the last 10 games. T uh, eight wins, one loss, one draw. Uh, Cause that very disappointing one lo nothing loss early in the season in the Via Play Cup. As I said earlier on, Rogers has lost three times at Kilmarnock on the plastic pitch. Um, but I'm quite confident Celtic are going to win. Um, I would go personally for 3 1. I think Celtic keeping clean sheets these days uh, is unusual. Um, and as per the game against Hibs, I think if Celtic get on top nice and early, come on, it will have nothing um, to stop them or get back into the game. I think the longer the game goes on at nil-nil, the more that uh, come on, it's, um, blocking out in defence, um, hoping that the referee doesn't start flashing yellow cards early in the game, which uh, saved them quite a bit in the last game in the Via Play Cup, where... The referee, who I think was Alan Muir, seemed very happy just to let Kilmarnock foul right, left and centre, including the one which um, put Celtic temporarily down to 10 men when Greg Taylor was whacked in the head from the back, causing him to go off for a head injury assessment and also an assessment from bleeding from his ear and during that spell when we were down to 10 men. Um, Kilmarnock got up um, the right side of their play, our left side, exploiting the gap that Taylor was in, and then the ball across the box, which was poorly defended, um, allowing Kilmarnock to score at the back post. So, I think Celtic win 3-1 tomorrow. Um, good start, got on top, and then uh, we can get our revenge on Kilmarnock, currently sixth, 
and either extend our lead um, over the eight points it is currently, depending on Rangers' result today, or at least restore it back to eight as we get close to Christmas. I'll plan to do uh, another video possibly tomorrow afternoon or more likely Monday morning, um, having had a chance to reflect and review and pontificate uh, and speculate regarding uh, the Celtic game tomorrow. So for today, thanks for watching. Thanks for contributing to yesterday's poll regarding who Celtic should play on the right. Um, 40 percent of you went for Mikey Johnston, 30 percent and uh, James Forrest. Interestingly, um, 20 percent went for Rocco Vata, 10 percent went for Marco Tellio and uh, not too surprisingly, um, nobody went for uh, Yang to play tomorrow. I think Yang deserves a bit of a rest, a bit of a uh, time to get uh, settled back into Scotland. I think he's had a difficult time, um, played quite a number of high profile games. I think Yang actually, uh, his best role is going to be coming off the bench for Celtic for the next year or two uh, um, as a late game substitution to bring in a bit of pace and skill. Um, I think uh, the trekking back and forward to South Korea for international matches and Olympic qualifying matches along with high profile games and European games uh, was maybe just too much for him at this time in his career. However, We'll see what we can see. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck, Celtic, in your game tomorrow. Goodbye and hail, hail.